Am I not? Oh, give me one second. There we go. I don't know why I can't hear you. Maybe it's on my end, hold on. Now I hear you. Okay. No, okay, okay, cool. All right, I'm out of here. Bye, Steven. See ya. Yo, Steve Arena, what up, man? Yo. How you doing, buddy? Doing all right. Yeah. How about yourself? Doing good. Me and Cherish moving to our new house next Wednesday. Oh, nice. I mean, this Wednesday, my bad. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah, me and Mrs. are going to anime Matsuri the week after. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's right. Things are starting to open up again. It's crazy. Yeah. So excited about watching this panel, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Covering a lot of information in a little bit of time. So I'm just trying to go through everything right now. All right, no problem. I'm going to grab a pen and paper so I can write this stuff down. It's also going to be recorded. So So I can go and, re so I can go and write So I can go and re write down if I need to. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Yeah, Cherish is here too. Mm, really paying attention, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's I'm doing a crawling app on her phone right now. Nice. Mm. Let's see. Work has been going good. We can get what you're about to you know, come off her back, off our desk. Sure, no problem. Hang on. Hang on. I'll be RB, buddy. Hey, I'm slicing back.
Yes, settings, testing, testing. Do, 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 do. Okay. Cool. Yep. Well, the um, USOF is in a couple of weeks. Excited. We'll just give a couple more minutes for people to trickle in and then we'll start. How's everyone doing today? If you want to like unmute and talk or whatever, uh, you're free to do so right now. I'm doing great, buddy. How are you doing? Doing all right. You so excited about the new house? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Congrats, did by see, the way. Did you see the pictures of it on my Facebook? I don't look at my Facebook too much, if I'm being honest. That's cool. Yeah. Yes, me, myself, Cherish, and one of my friends. I'm going to Anime Matsuri in two weeks. Nice. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's see. And we got a Lauren. Oh, nice, Emily. Got some recording stuff in the works. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll give some people just a couple more minutes and then we'll um, start. And then we're ready to rock. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still gonna have a dead gum hard time when I'm, when I'm Mining melancholy. Dead gum, it's a tough one to play. Let's see, there we go. Okay, I think I have everything set up right. Hopefully all the stuff is set up.
All right, yeah, we have quite a few people trickling in. We'll give it like a couple more minutes, like two to three more minutes, and then I'll um, start it. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure all my audio settings are right so everything actually goes through. Let's see. Okay. Hey, Nicholas. We got big Nick in there. How are you doing, Nicholas? Hey, I'm doing great. How's everybody doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear. Oh my God, I'm doing excellent, buddy. How are you doing? Yeah, you're pretty quiet, but that's probably because you're not using like a mic close to you. Ah, I see. <laughs> that explains it. <laughs> Is this any better? Yeah, awesome. it's, it's better. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Is everyone recording today? Is that what you're doing earlier or? Let's see. All right, just like one sort of minutes and then I'll start. Let's see, okay. There we go. Okay. Let's see. Share sound. And boop. Okay. Let me just make sure I have chat on the other monitor. Wait, I want to. I want that on the other screen. Okay. One second. I'm trying to learn how to actually do this really quick. Let's see. Okay, then it goes on this screen, I believe. Oh no, it doesn't. All right, so it's not gonna do it how I want it. So I'm just, one monitor is fine. It's so whatever. <laughs> Share sound, okay. Um. All right, Um. since it's a little bit past three, well, three my time, uh, let's get started. All right. So my name is Steven, and this is kind of just a quick little workshop on, it's kind of like an introdu introduction to recording and mixing Ocarina. I was supposed to change slides, there we go. <laughs> a couple things to note, uh, this is meant to be more of an overview and not so much a deep dive into like the specifics of each thing. I'm just kind of giving a couple things that I do that you know, pretty that affect my covers greatly when I post them on YouTube or if I'm doing like projects for recording whatever I'm doing, whether it's like for an album or whatever it is. There will be time for questions at the end. So unless it's like really important, uh, please try to save them for the end or you can post them in the chat and I'll look at them then. Uh, let's see. So what I'll be discussing, so the software I'll be using, which is pretty much all free software. Uh, Reaper, which is my di digital audio workstation of choice, um, and it pretty much has an infinite free trial, which is really convenient. Uh, Replugins is plugins that you can also download from the Reaper website. Uh, they have a bunch of plug plugins, whether it's um, equalizer, compression, all that stuff. Uh, there's also Oreal River, which is the plugin that I use for reverb, also free. MuseScore, which is where I do all my arrangements in pretty much. I'm going to talk a little bit about how I kind of create my arrangements through MuseScore and how I put that into Reaper. And then also you have here, which is Spitfire Labs and the BBC Symphony Orchestra. Uh, these are virtual instruments that I use and I put them on top of the MIDI files I get from MuseScore, which I'll talk about in a second. 
if you don't know what I'm talking about there, don't worry, I'll, I'll explain it a little bit better. Right now, I'm just trying to go through all this really quick. And hardware, uh, you know, microphone plus audio interface, if you need an audio interface for your recording device, you can use your phone for the audio files and just transfer it to your computer, but it's definitely recommended to get a microphone when you're doing this stuff. Um, yeah, so the stuff that we'll be discussing is pretty much microphone angle and distance to recording the ocarina. Um, how I create piano and string backing tracks, just like a quick little overview of that. And also kind of setting up Reaper a little bit and how to import your backing track, recording in Reaper and organizing the file. And yeah, some basic things that we'll be doing to Mixed Ocarina, which is EQ, compression, reverb. And just those alone are gonna make a huge difference when it comes to just creating your um, covers. Right, I'm gonna stop the screen share really quick because I have to go to a different uh, program. All right, let's see. One second. I, I totally know how to do this, clearly. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Um, all right, so as you can see, this is kind of the arrangement I did for um, my most recent video. I pretty much put everything into MuseScore, and I kind of did all that way. Ignore these tempo markings. It's just because editing MIDI is hard, so I just did it in MuseScore. These are like tempo changes I did to slow it down and speed it up. Um, first, uh, I want to ask, can everyone hear this? If you can like put it in chat or, um, okay, cool. Audio settings aren't screwed up. That's good. Um, so as you can see here, if you're trying to just read the sheet music off for, for, for oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm speaking so fast. Let me slow down a little bit. <sighs> sorry. I'm just nervous. Um, so as you can see, trying to read just the ocarina here is kind of difficult because you have all these pages. But one cool thing that MuseScore does that you can do really quick, if you go to File, and don't worry, this is being recorded, so you can check this out later. Go to File, Parts, just click All Parts, OK. All of your parts are now separated. So you have all the sheet music and all the stuff that you need, which is really cool. Um, next. Um, so the cool thing about MuseScore is if you don't have any virtual instruments and you're, for example, if you have Audacity and your computer can't run Reaper or um, like it has trouble with it, what you can do is you can, you can just export these like files and put them into Audacity. And the cool thing about MuseScore is if you don't have those virtual instruments, that's fine. For example, the piano is actually pretty decent in here. So like when I was first starting to like kind of mess around with recording stuff. I just exported the music files for like the piano and stuff and I put them into um, uh, Audacity when I first started. So the cool thing is if you go to um, view, synthesizer, you have this little, <laughs> this little thing that pops up. And the cool thing about this is you can actually adjust the amount of reverb, um, kind of the delay and all that stuff. So I can kind of give a quick example. As you can see, you can kind of change whatever settings it is. If I do this. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this is really easy to do. And what I normally do is I normally leave all the settings to the default and I'll put this all the way on dry. If I'm exporting the piano file, if I'm just exporting the piano and all you have to do is just go to export and then just mp3 file, wave file, whatever you want to do. So that's enough of that, because this isn't what I really want to talk about when it comes to making my arrangements. Uh, what I normally do is I just export the MIDI file. And pretty much what this is, is it's not necessarily the audio, but it's basically telling the computer all these little signals of what to do for audio, which you'll, you'll see in a second. It's, it's a little confusing at first. I normally export it as MIDI file, whatever you do. Oh my gosh, there we go. And yeah. Oh yeah, the one thing I forgot to do, if you're wanting to create a click track, an easy way to create a click track is adding a percussion part, like a clave's part, and literally just doing quarter notes. Just spam quarter notes, and now you have your click track just right here which is really, really convenient. So this goes along with all the tempo changes you do. Um, 
super quick and easy. I, yeah, I really love doing it that way. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. So now, Reaper. Uh, when you first open it, hold on, let me get the mixer. That's how I open. Yeah. So this is what you'll see when you first open Reaper for like the first time. Uh, normally, I close this mixer just because I do everything kind of right here. It's just more convenient that way. Uh, yes, you'll you'll do this you'll do this in a second when you're creating uh, your instrument package for uh, MIDI. Um, so yeah, what you do is just insert your MIDI file wherever it is. I really need to clean this computer, as you see, it's all over the place. Uh, there we go. Somewhere over here. There we go. And then it'll want, ask you to expand. Just plus OK, 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 OK. How many times do you have to press OK? And here you have all of your MIDI, all, all your MIDI files right here. It's really convenient. Um, so the first thing I normally do is I normally, I like separating everything to make it nice and neat. So what I do is if you do Control T or whatever the equivalent is for Mac, or you just do right click, insert track. I like separating everything so it's nice and neat. And you can kind of press these things on the side to help organize it. So let me just add another track here, boop. Can get a little tedious at times, but it's really, really useful, especially as you like continue to make something. So let me do this really quick. And this will be strings, boop. And another cool thing about Reaper is you can actually color code everything. So if I just do this, right click, track color, I can just set one random color or I can, oh, I don't like that color. So I'm gonna choose my own color. Uh, custom color, let's see. You know, I'm feeling like Ocarina should be a little bit blue today. Sure, why not? Uh, there we go. Piano, I'll just do as red. So as you can see, it's making everything super just neat, color organized and yeah, it just makes the workflow so much quicker in my opinion. Oh, sure, I'll do like green. Custom color. Uh, that one's fine. So as you can see right here, um, sorry, I'm just reading the um, chat real quick. I mean, OBS video works, but I normally just, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a whole nother topic for when it comes to like recording uh, video and stuff like that. Um, in terms of audio, you're just much better off recording right into Audacity or right into Reaper, which is what I'm going to be talking about. All right, so now we have everything color coded nice and pretty. Um, now you're probably wondering, why do I have the MIDI file for just the Ocarina here? Wouldn't I just, you know, remove and delete that? Why is this over here? Go on the other side. You're making this difficult. Okay, whatever. Well, the thing is, when I record my covers, Sometimes I'm lazy and I like having pitch right behind me. Um, yes, I do highly recommend doing audio and video, se video separately. And especially because Ocarina is such a hard instrument to tune. Normally for each of my covers, I do at least like, you know, two or three takes or so. And I like doing them separate. So it's just easier to do it all here. Then I just do the video second. And it's just, it's just easier. So if I go here, and you have all these effects. If you've downloaded all the effects and virtual instruments that I discussed in the beginning, um, just find the resynth. And what it is, it's basically just a little synthesizer and it plays. Let me turn that down so it's not killing people's ears. Can everyone hear this? Cool. So the cool thing about this is this is pretty much a guide what I use for like pitch and I'll play along with it if I'm recording an ocarina and I should have brought out an ocarina. Let me get one from my box of stuff. And since the ocarina is like a sine wave, you can definitely like hear with the ears if you are out of tune or something of this sort. And this is when I normally will do my recording when it comes to actually recording the ocarina. What I normally do is I normally have the microphone about Oh, that almost fell. That was bad. I have the ocarina probably about like a foot away from me, a foot to a foot and a half away from me. And I normally have the ocarina, I mean the microphone slightly above the ocarina. Um, 
for me, this is what I do for all my covers and stuff. For me, this is what gives it the most crisp sound, I guess I would say, for me at least. And the crazy thing is, depending on where you are and how you're blowing like in direction to the microphone, it's gonna change the sound of it, which is really weird. Um, so like, for example, if I'm doing like, as you see, just from that alone, you can kind of hear like some sound a little bit like more crisp, some sound a little bit airy, more airy than others. It's one of those things where you also have to like experiment with the mic angle, what you like the most. Sometimes I'll have the microphone maybe a little bit lower so I can get a little bit more airiness, which is what I did for, for example, if I'm playing Okami, just because I would like a little bit more of that textured sound. It's, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. Yeah, and then I normally create, um, wait, let me create another one. I would normally like have my recordings in a separate tab. So recordings, I'll just do that really quick. That's fine. Boop. All right. Now for creating the backing track, I either A, export the file from MuseScore, and I use that as the backing track, or I just do it on here. And the cool thing about Reaper, it has a built-in metronome. Just click that, and now you have a metronome. And it's following the MIDI information that you have that we imported earlier. So that's, it's just that easy. Believe it or not, it's not, too difficult it might seem confusing at first but once you get used to this workflow you can create covers within you know hours to days it's it's actually really cool how quickly you can do this and yes that metronome will change with the midi time if you have the midi information into reaper already because midi is pretty much it's not it's not sound midi is just information all this is just information from midi all right now it's time to create the backing tracks. So for the piano, whatever piano you download, you can use Spitfire Labs if you're wanting. Uh, personally, I normally use the one that came with my Focusrite software. If you get a Focusrite interface, you actually get access to a couple of pretty decent software for free. This is normally like, you know, 60, 80 bucks, but it comes with free if you get a Focusrite interface, which is kind of cool. So this, I'm just going to use this piano just because this is what I'm used to. So now we have a uh, piano. Boom, piano instantly right there. It's cool. And now for strings, same thing. You press that little effects track window, um, look up labs, or it'll probably pop up for you immediately if you don't have a bunch of software like me. Um, so for our labs, ooh, I don't know why there's an error. Shouldn't be there. Hopefully it works for this. Now, if you download the Spitfire Lab strings, you'll have Ensemble, Long, and Short. Personally, I mainly use Long because Ensemble has a really harsh attack, and Short is just like really quick. It's not really useful for at least what I do. So I normally just use the Long. And now we have strings. Um, it's not necessarily Pizzicato. Pizzicato is on strings too, I believe. It's just like a short, like, da, da. So yeah, now we have strings. Boom. And now we can go into recording. Um, so like I said, normally a foot to a foot and a half away. That's what I would normally do for recordings. Uh, sometimes if I want it to be a little bit more crisp, I might lower it to like about a foot. I wouldn't go less than 10 inches though when I'm recording, especially because I don't want to overpower the microphone. It also depends on what microphone you have. If you have a dynamic microphone, you might be recording a little bit closer, like maybe around like half a foot to a foot. Um, and by dynamic microphone, if you've seen one like a Shure SM57, yeah. It really depends on the type of microphone you have, but for most microphones, because most of them are condensers and stuff like that, you gotta be probably about a foot to a foot and a half away. All right. So I'm not gonna record live right now because I already have recordings and I'm just gonna do, oh wait, actually I did wanna do something. Ooh, hold on, I'm trying to think how I wanna do this. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll just do whatever. All right. Ooh, I don't wanna hear myself, gross. All right, so I'm just gonna be doing these like, let me just mute all the tracks really quick, sorry. Okay, there we go. 
So right now I'm just gonna let this run by because I have a reason for this, I promise. Just one second. So while we're waiting for this, how's everyone doing today? Let me turn off this metronome. <laughs> Um, yes, you can use USB mics. USB mics are good as well. Uh, right now, I'm using uh, the USB mode on my um, Blue Yeti Pro. The Blue Yeti Pro uses XLR and USB, which is pretty convenient. If you have any questions right now you want to talk about now, feel free to do so, because right now I'm kind of just waiting for um, this to um, record and stuff like that. There, there's good reason for me just recording. So oh, no. Ah, I don't want to hear myself. Gross. Okay, there we go. Nice. Thank you, Nicholas, I really appreciate it. Sorry that I'm going pretty fast. It's just, <laughs> I'm, there's a lot of information. Luckily this is recorded, so. All right, let's start going through the questions. Um, Emily, did you say that some of this stuff was free with Focusrite? Yes. So with Focusrite, you have access to a couple free, uh, free limited versions of DAWs. You have access to software, they have a, different software that comes out every month. But one of the software that stays constant is Addictive Keys. You have a choice of three free um, three free um, sounds from Addictive Keys. You have an electric, no, four. You have an upright piano, a grand piano, which I think is the best one. Download the grand piano, it's the best. Electric uh, piano, um, organ, stuff like that. It's pretty cool. And there's also some other software that you can download, which is, yeah. Uh, question, would you export all of this the same if you're working on a mobile video for TikTok or Instagram? Um, generally, yes. Uh, normally, if I'm if I'm uploading a video like to like Instagram or like doing a quick thing like that, um, unless I'm just recording on my phone just for the fun and stuff, I'll normally do this, export a video and I'll like put it into video editing software and then I'll export it and then download it on my phone and upload it that way. Um, let's see. Yeah, you're not, so, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to hear this. Um, this is just me recording files because I'm about to show you something cool with, uh, Reaver. Um, um, you still can get addictive keys via serial number and you can download it up to, you can get the same things up to, um, two computers, I believe. Oh. So yeah, it doesn't matter if you tossed it, uh, Mark. I think you can just get it through, because that's what I did, because I ended up getting a new computer recently. All right, so this is probably enough for this. All right, okay. So as you can kind of see, if you just record over and over, uh, what it does is it kind of separates it into takes. And also you can just go here and like send that. So the cool thing is if you're recording stuff, um, normally I'll do like three or so takes on something, uh, just, to some takes are better than others. Some might be more expressive than others. The cool thing about this is if there's something I don't like, if I just press S or I like just split it. Oh yeah, you might wanna uh, remove the snap because that gets annoying. If there's something I like here and I don't like here, I can literally just go boop, boom. I just cut the track. I can adjust it. I can separate takes super easy with this. I can take one part of a take that I like one part of a take I don't like. Believe it or not, I do this for videos a lot just because it saves time. It saves time trying to get that perfect tape. Take. Wow, I said tape. I meant take. Um, especially when I'm trying to do stuff quickly. It's just so much easier to just separate takes, in my opinion. And then, yeah, you can download. I mean, um, remove that. You can just be like, all right, I want that. Oh, I want this right here. And it's just super easy. It just makes your workflow so much faster. So now that being said, I'm going to delete these goodbye audio files. Boop. Uh, how many do I need? Um, I, separated, I separated these a lot just because I was having a really bad day with recording, as you can see. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need seven. OK. Let me go here. I'm just going to copy all these because I don't feel like recording live because that takes a lot of work. Oop. Now I already have the audio files, so I don't need to record live. And just 
cool thing about Reaper as well is you can kind of just copy and paste. Um, wait, why is it not copying? Oh, yeah. What am I doing wrong? Oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. Hold up. Apologies. I am horrible at technology, clearly. Copy items. And now, boop. That is not what I wanted. Do I only do one item at a time? Oh, that's lame. I'm just gonna go here now. It's just it's just easy. <laughs> um, all right. So as you can see, I had a really bad day. So I did 11 takes on just that melody. It was not a good day, but it turned into a good day because I split it to 11 takes and it's just super easy to kind of do this. Well, I'm just going to remove all the effects right now because we don't need effects right now. So like even like with the melody, see how seamless it is? You don't even notice that there is a split. Some people think I'm doing full takes. No, I am I am full on splitting it. It's just so much easier that way. Um, let's see. Sorry. I'm trying to figure out why I'm not able to copy. And, oh, wait. I'm going to do a quick export of this, of just these. Okay. Now, now I know what to do. Okay. Uh, Rasion Ocarina's workshop. Oop. Yeah, I don't need all this. Oh, wait, I do need all the separate ones. Um, yes. So Reaper does add an, a, like a slightly like a slight fading transition. So um, kind of it's kind of difficult if you have something in middle take like a middle view playing that you want to change but what you can do is it's kind of hard to do it just by me telling you but you kind of have to play it by ear a little bit oh my gosh why is that popping up there we go so what you do is for example if the first part of the notes really good but the second part's bad what you can do is you can kind of drag one of the files into it and then you can try kind of mixing it this way um i'll get to that in a second so yeah for example if i do this you kind of like gotta find that sweet spot so it doesn't sound like it's actually as you see you still kind of hear it so i kind of want to maybe move it more over here A little bit better. So you have to kind of find it that way. Are you saying this X tool? And this X tool, I'm not really using a tool here. I'm just dragging audio files around. Oh my gosh. There we go. I'm literally just dragging this. I just click on the side and I drag it. So it's not really a tool. Oop. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much just overlapping the file. And since this is all, since I pressed it, since I split the audio file, even though I split the audio file, that doesn't mean it ends there. It's still taking the information of this audio file. So all I can do is I can just kind of just split it around. And I can do whatever I want with it. So that's pretty convenient. Um, I guess I'll talk about Ocarina effects now, just because I'm going to just send it all as one file to the other place. All right. So the effects I mainly use are um, compression. I don't need this for now. We don't need that. Uh, compression and compression. There we go. <laughs> Equalizer. There we go. Um, let's see. I'm pretty sure is Muse score is it? There's got to be at least one version of MuseScore available for like Windows 8.1. I'm pretty sure. Or like an older program of Reaper and stuff. I'm pretty sure there's stuff available for Windows 8.1. Uh, let's see. All right. So EQ, you're probably uh, seeing EQ and you're thinking like, what the heck is this? Well, this has a purpose, believe it or not. All right. Let me just open a uh, clean one right here really quick. 
And to do these, it's pretty much the same as applying instruments. You just press the effects tab and then you just search whatever plugin you need. It's, yeah. Do you need to turn my thought? So the cool thing about this is if you just play that one track that's on, as you can see, this is the waveforms. Uh, as you can see, the, ro the room I'm in was really loud. So you can kind of see like all this little, all this right here, it doesn't really matter too much. And when I do my EQ, um, the prop, this goes right into why mixing Ocarina is so difficult. And that's because lower, lower notes are just really quiet, high notes are loud. So what can you do to kind of counterbalance this? Well, what you do is you kind of see, just add a band. And when you add a band, you see this pop up, raise this a little bit, you can kind of lower the bandwidth and stuff. And what you do is you want to raise the lower notes up a little bit louder. And sometimes you want to cut down the higher notes. So I can already see the, the lower notes are already louder just from doing this. So this raises, so pretty much what an EQ does, and it raises volumes on specific frequencies. So as you can see, yeah, you can, you can just do anything you want with it. Um, no, I'm using compression to limit the high notes most of the time. So what I normally use, uh, at least for um, Reaper's basic compression, um, if I go to recomp right here, normally all I do for compression is if I put, put this up, I do the threshold at um, negative 20 decibels, which means it's gonna, that's when it's gonna start to kick in. And then I normally just do a ratio of five and that's it. And then attack at 3.0. This is all I do. I literally keep all the settings pretty basic. I just lower this by 20 and I put, put the ratio at five. I just leave it there. It works for me. I don't have any problems after that. I'm sure there's more you can do to slightly alter the sound. But for me, this is what I do that just works really well. Just really basic, really quick and easy. Yeah, so it's, yeah. You don't really, really need to know like the specifics to even just, cr you know, create half decent like sounding stuff. Yeah, just do that, kind of do whatever you want with that. But normally what I do is I normally do this. I'll normally limit the high notes a little bit and I'll, ra I'll raise the low notes. You don't really need to lower the high notes because your compression does that. But yeah, it kind of depends on what you're hearing and stuff. All depends on that. And you can just mess around with that because there's some pretty wild things you can do. For example, if I want to make all like the frequencies up there disappear, I just do that and all that stuff fits. You don't really need to, you don't need to know that. Trust me, you can just experiment with that stuff on your own. Right now, I'm just talking about the basic things you can do when like recording and mixing. So I'm gonna, what did I do there? Okay. Yeah, that's just the basic stuff I do. Compression and reverb. I mean, no, compression and EQ, which come free with um, the replugin suite that you download off of the Reaper website, which I'm gonna put all the links to all that uh, probably in like the post on the, um, on the Facebook group or whatever. Or if you can't find that post, just message me and I can send you all the links to all this stuff. Uh, all right, next, you I'll don't need to know about that. Don't worry. Okay, cool, thank you. I'll send you links and stuff. All right, so next we have reverb. Can everyone see this little reverb tab thing really quick? Just making sure everyone can see it. Cool. All right, so the cool thing about the O'Neill River is it has a bunch of just built in, like a kind of like set reverbs that you can do. So for example, I'm just gonna, you can mute tracks. If you press the S button, it makes it so this is the only track that's playing. Yeah, which is pretty convenient. Or you can just mute tracks individually. Um, let's see. So let's just have this Ocarina going. Then activate the reverb. So I can choose. So it's cool, it has all these little built-in rooms. And yes, this is free software, by the way. It's pretty convenient. 
Let's see, Mega Hall. A little too much. <laughs> that one's a little too much. Stop, please. Why are you no stopping? Okay. There we go. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I was struggling there, but yeah. What I normally do is I like I like doing medium haul, and I'll lower it, like maybe lower to wet the wet part of it just a little bit. And for me, I find this is a pretty quick and easy reverb to add. Not too much, but just enough to kind of give the ocarina a little bit of warmth and body. And that's what I normally do for reverb and all that stuff. Yeah, the reverb, the reverb uh, and the reverb rate plugins, they're okay. But for me, I didn't really, I wasn't really too fond of them, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I'm just going to export uh, this audio file so I can put it into the other project really quick. Uh, green, oh, wait. Um, there we go. Workshop. And the cool thing about it exports files pretty fast. Uh, that reverb plugin was the O'Neill River. Um, just, uh, if you look up O'Neill River um, reverb, it, oh wait, O'Neill, is it O'Neill or O'Neill? Hold on, I might be wrong, one second. No, that's not the right one, that's an imager. Master, no, I don't want the master. No, that's not the master. Yeah, I think it's on No River. Yeah. Um, I do use delay sometimes, but the cool thing about this uh reverb plugin right here is it has you can do some delay stuff in it. And normally normally this is just what I do. I normally just kind of leave the delay and stuff and decay and stuff into here. For me, that's just what works better for my covers. Uh sometimes I will use delay. Um I think reverb um I think Reaper does have a built-in delay thing. Yeah, it has a built-in delay thing. I don't use it too much, but you can kind of experiment with it. It's it's pretty cool. All of these reverb, uh, re a lot of these Reaper, yeah, Reaper, not Reaper, Reaper. Okay, those are two different words. A lot of these Reaper plugins are um, pretty convenient to use. They may look pretty simple, but they actually work pretty decently, especially if you're just starting out. You definitely don't need paid software to do this stuff. I've been doing a lot of this free stuff, software stuff for a while. It wasn't until recently, so I started actually paying for software. So, yeah, that's all of that. Um, let's go to the Ocarina Workshop. Hey, boop. I just have all my Ocarina files in one, so I'll just insert media file. Ras oh my gosh, I can't type. Wait, it should be in downloads. I have a lot of audio files, as you can tell. Yay, there we go. I don't have to search. So yeah, when I'm recording, I normally record with that. After the recording, I normally just, uh, nope, bye. And now you have this. And just with those things that I kind of talked about, Now you can kind of get into like the mixing of it you can like you know adjust the volume of the tracks here all that stuff you can get into like the nitty-gritty and stuff like that yes there's plenty of open source software out there okay so pitch correction now i guess i can talk a little bit about the pitch correction software i mean there is pitch correction software reaper does come with a uh, free um pitch correction thing uh if you just with that software in mind, if you just look up repitch, everything has re in front of it for that for the replugin suite. So this is the the pitch editing software. Um, oh wait, this is the pitch. This is if you want to just adjust the pitch. Uh, there is another one. Uh, what is it called? Uh, let me find which one it was. Retune, that's what it is. It's Retune, uh, which comes with the Replugin suite when you download it. If you go to Correction, uh, and then you do Automatic Correction, 
it kind of does it like an automatic like pitch correction it's not great you can definitely notice sometimes when it actually is out of tune a little bit track pitch yeah, and the cool thing is if you use this retune thing you can kind of see how like out of tune you are and stuff like it shows all the pitches which is kind of cool and if there's for example if there's a couple things that you really just want you can kind of do this mantle correction thing where you just kind of you can kind of just like draw a line there and then it'll do it i haven't really experimented with this too much because personally it's not the greatest if you want to do pitch correction it's best to get this paid software called Melodyne, but it's also 90 bucks. It's a little bit expensive, but a lot of mixing engineers and stuff use Melodyne. And that's what I also use if I need pitch correction. So yeah, the, the built-in tuning software is, it's not the greatest in my opinion. Uh, yes, it's a lot of trial and error. It's, that's all mixing is. Uh, you don't know how many times where I've just like mixed like you know seven different versions of a track <laughs> it's i'll spend hours at a time just like well i'll just go back to this later <laughs> and then i just mix it again uh oh yeah there's one more thing i did want to talk about with this and that is when you're kind of mixing two ocarinas at the same time so for example right here uh let me lower the master it's not oh wait that's uh panning there we go there you go, so we're not killing your ears. Oh yeah, reverb's not even on. Let me actually just turn all these on really quick. Oop. Ooh. So when I'm mixing two ocarinas at a time, uh, one thing I really like doing, oh, hold on, let me see. Do you manually correct the volume of different parts of the same track? Uh, by manually cor correcting the volume, uh, can you uh, tell me a little bit more about what you mean by that? Uh, so yeah, back to this really quick. Uh, when I'm doing two different ocarinas, I like panning them a little bit left and a little bit right. Uh, for me right here, I panned this one 35% left and I panned this one 35% right. Now how you do that, um, you just look at this knob and you just do that. You, you can just move it with your mouse, which is kind of cool. So for example, let's do this. I'm not sure if I have, I'm not sure if you can hear stereo over um, um, Zoom. Well, that was weird. Oh, I have a delay on. I forgot I put a delay on earlier uh, when I was talking about that. Hold on, let me find it. <laughs> Where is that delay? I thought I had a delay on still. I did, okay. I was so confused for a second. Uh, using the volume knob. Uh, you can't use the volume knob to um, change the volume on like different parts of the track, but there is a couple things you can kind of do with that. Uh, one of the things you can do is if you click like kind of hover around the top of the track, you can kind of lower the volume of a part. So for example, if I'm doing this, if I have like a part that's really loud, I can like just do that. So yeah, that's that's something you can do. Um, yeah, good, good question though. Oh yeah, another thing you can do. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. If you press the V button, you have this little thing that pops up uh, that says volume underneath. And I remember you can just do this to kind of expand tracks. You just hover under, which is cool. Um, what, you, what this does is if you kind of like click, you can kind of create like these little dots. I'm not sure if you can see them or not, but you can kind of raise and lower these little dots to kind of like adjust like volume at specific spots. So this can be useful if you have like a note that's really, really loud, AKA if you're playing a soprano and your ears just die from a really loud note. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I would do for that. Oop. Okay, going back to actually mixing the two ocarina parts. Sorry for that. I was just responding to chat. 
You can use .mp3 files with Reaper, yes. Um, it doesn't correct peaks. Uh, if your microphone peaks and like it actually this fuzzes out, it's kind of just, you're kind of just, <laughs> you're, you're just gonna have to record it because that means you just overpowered your microphone. So definitely another thing with recording Ocarina, sorry. I'm just reading chat and stuff and there's all this information I wanna give. The cool, th uh, the cool thing about this stuff, you can always raise stuff and just raise the volume louder. But if you overpower the microphone and peak it, if you're too close or like too loud, there's nothing you can really do post and like post production. So what I do is when I'm recording, I don't want it to go above negative 12 decibels. And what I mean by that is, for example, if I am recording and you kind of see this, I don't want this going above like negative 10 to negative six. If it goes above negative six, you're risking peaking your microphone, especially on the higher notes. You can always make things louder. You can't make it softer when you're recording. <laughs> if you overpower the microphone and it just goes like, you know, I'm not gonna peak the microphone because I don't want to kill your ears, but you get the point. <laughs> don't want to do that. Okay. Now, actually going to the part that I was trying to go to like 10 minutes ago. So yeah, I normally pan this left and right. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear stereo over Zoom. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear the stereo, but you can kind of see that I'm adjusting it to be like left and right in my ear, which is kind of cool. I have to do a lot of back. Wow, I have to go backwards a lot. There we go. Oh, I have to delete the delay still. Stop. No, stop. As you see, I don't like using delay. Delay does not like me. <laughs> All right, one second. There we go. So yeah, I normally pan one ocarina left and one ocarina right. It kind of depends on what you want and what you like hearing. Personally, I like having um, the higher ocarina on the right sometimes, depending on the track. And I normally will like put for this track, I wanted the higher voice on the right and the lower voice on the left. Same thing went with this section when I used a Super Nino and a um, Triple Alta C. Same thing. Uh, my Super Nino is kind of hard to tune. So as you can kind of see, I did 17, <laughs> I did a total of 17 takes on different parts. Like this was this and that was that and all that stuff, yeah. Sopranino is hard, but look, I didn't do one take. I literally separated, uh, I think I did, I used four different takes in this. As you see, if you just, you can just separate it in the spots where you're not playing and it makes it super easy and you don't even notice it. Yeah, I'm basically a speedrunner that's cheating. But it makes my workflow really fast. And I know if I make mistakes, I can just do it again and not have to worry. I can just cut something out. So yes, I'm a cheater. I'm sorry to, to disappoint you all. <laughs> yeah, that, that part's cool. Yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much all there is to it. I pretty much talked about everything. And then you can just kind of go into details and experiment with yourself, what you like for your volumes and all that stuff. I pretty much talked about all the software that I normally, that would use. I talked about some basic stuff you can do for, um, you know, any of this stuff. Uh, now, if you have questions, so many people, oh, creating a, if you, um, Charles, what do you mean by creating an audio file? Can you elaborate a little bit on that for me? If you mean if you mean creating a, an audio file outside of Reaper, yes, you can. I probably should have clarified this earlier. Let me just uh, create a new project tab. And the cool thing is, another cool thing about Reaper, look, all my project tabs right here. And I can just swap between them like nothing. It's it's so cool. I love Reaper so much. All right. Uh, so one thing you can do, if you if you just go to um, let's say I think I'm trying to figure out which one insert. If you go to insert video file, you can just plug in whatever media file you want. As you see, I have a lot of recordings, so uh, ignore all of those.
So for example, if I want, um, wait, let me just go to um, new score really quick. Oop. Uh, what do I want to do for audio file? Yeah, so for example, if that's the audio file I wanted to do. Now I have the audio file in Reaper. Ooh, that's an excellent question. For playing live, do you keep the same effects on the mic track? Now this, for me, yes, but it really depends on your computer and how much your computer can process. So this is, this is where I'm gonna kind of get into some really, um, it's like the nitty gritty of this stuff. So if I'm recording live, as you can see right here, there's a 57 second delay. As, that's uh, not 57 second delay. Uh, this is 57 over 213 milliseconds. There's quite a bit of delay here right now. And what I mean is if I was to, I was to you can hear you how can much hear the, how delay much is, the delay right? is, right? Yeah, yeah. The delay, the is, delay pretty is pretty bad. Now, now okay. Uh, one thing you can do is if, for example, if you have a USB mic or like an audio interface, uh, you want to go to options, preferences, and then go to your dev audio device settings. Now, if you have an audio interface for like uh, Focusrite, go to like ASIO, and then you can choose which one you have. For, I have my Yeti Pro, which is my USB microphone, and I also have like my Focusrite interface. So boom. And once you press OK, look how much less the delay is. The delay is like nothing. So for example, if I go to um, uh, Yeti Pro, as you can see this, the delay here is a little bit more. Because, oh, it's at, it's at, wow, that's a lot. Why is it that high? OK, hold on. Let me request a sample rate real quick. Um, so you can kind of create block sizes and stuff like that. It's let me just do this really quick. Okay, as you see with this, um, there's a little bit of delay. You can hear maybe a tiny, tiny bit. Well, on my side, I hardly hear anything. On, on my side, I hear just a tiny bit. I'm not sure about you guys, because, but yes. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that your, um, your computer can handle this, because the more, yeah. The more stuff you add into like the file, the more the computer is gonna have to process. So the slower it's gonna be. So for me, with my like current setup and my audio interface, I can run EQ, compression, reverb and all that stuff. But there's some people that might only be able to run um, maybe one thing or something like that. I mean, any USB, Charles, any USB mic will work with Reaper. Like any, any USB mic will work fine. So you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, Jack, we were talking about uh, performing live. Producing video, I do all on the side and I use DaVinci Resolve. I record all my videos separately and then I put them all into DaVinci Resolve and I sync them with my audio track. Yes, DaVinci Resolve is also free. If your computer can handle it, you should use it. It's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? Sorry, that one took a while because performing live is difficult. And yeah, all this might seem like a lot. It is a lot at first. And it's a lot of trial and error. But over time, it gets a lot easier and everyone can do this stuff. Oh, yes, you can do video on Reaper as well with a video processing plugin. For me, I like just doing it in um, DaVinci Resolve for my workflow and all that stuff. Oh, Reaper just crashed. That's weird. You can do audio in Resolve as well. Yeah, you definitely can. But Resolve is also really, really strong and powerful software. So, um, yeah. And yeah, I use MuseScore all the time. Um, you can do audio, audio with o OBS. That's like a whole nother talk though. Personally, it's, it's so much easier to just record audio in Reaper because it's literally just a click of a button and then, uh, 
boom, you have your you have your audio file right there. It's super quick once you get used to it. Another great question. Yes. Um, like I said, it really depends on the instrument um, for condenser mics. For example, um, and yes, uh, I use a dynamic mic whenever I'm playing in a loud area. Or like I'll put like a dynamic mic on like a snare drum or something of the sort because it's just so much easier to record it that way. Um, I only use this dynamic mic when I'm recording Ocarina if I want it to be really crisp or if there's a lot of background noise in my area because sometimes there might be some trucks working outside and I'm just like, all right, I have to record. Guess I'm going to be using this mic. Uh, condenser mics for me, they capture more of the sound of the Ocarina I want. In reality, it's all sound preference. Some people want to use different mics than others. For example, you might use a ribbon mic instead, but maybe it's way catching way too much background noise or something like that. It all depends on the person's like situation and yeah, it's not, it's not necessarily better. It's more of what you perceive as better, I guess I would say. It's all individual preference. Any other questions? But yeah, once you once you add reverb to like, for example, I, I guess I'll talk about this. So I'm not doing these groups for no reason, because the cool thing about these groups is once you add those tracks like under the group, for example, once you like you do this and you just click on that. So it's under that. Those two tracks are now under this track. And what I mean by that is if you add an effect on this track, it's going to affect both of these tracks as well. Same goes for this, same goes for this, same goes for all these strings, which is really cool. Uh, do you have any tips for setting up your room? Uh, yes. Uh, the cheap option is, uh, if you can, hang blankets on your wall. <laughs> so I, I do... <laughs> I, I normally, I, when I was recording at my parents' place uh, before I um, moved back out, um, I put all the blankets on walls and I literally had blankets hung up on all the walls. Now I have a room that is actually pretty decent for recording in the music building. So I don't record here because it's like, it echoes a little bit. So <laughs> yeah, it echoes a little bit. So I don't like recording here. But yeah, that's another, that's another big one. Um, yeah, I would record with blankets on the walls if you can, or in a closet. Recording in the closet is good. So, removing echo. Uh, removing echo can be quite difficult, especially if you're just getting into um, doing mixing and stuff. It's it's really difficult to remove echo. The best way to work with echo is using a reverb that works with your room. Because sometimes you can use reverb that's sim almost similar to your like room's echo to make it so like it sounds a little bit more natural. So that's what I would do. Because trying to remove like actual echo is, yeah, no. And yes, recording in the closet. Um, before I put blankets on my wall, I had this little closet in like the corner of my room. So I would just go in there and record. I had like my whole mic set up in the closet. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't record in bathrooms because bathrooms echo a lot. The reason why I use a closet is because my closet's really damp and just like dry. So if I record in it, sound isn't going anywhere. Which is why I wouldn't record in a bathroom because yes, it's good for natural like recording. Like it, it's kind of like works like a concert hall almost where like you're recording in this big hall so sound travels. But if you're recording to mix, you want to record in a dry space because you can do all the reverb and all the echo and stuff in post-production. Because it's so much easier to just add reverb instead of trying to remove it. So, oh, I peaked the microphone when I clapped. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Any questions you have, please let me know. Yeah. yeah as you can see, <laughs> Another, oh, I forgot. There was one more thing I did want to talk about. Uh, when you're using these three um, plugins, uh, one thing you might notice like when you're using these three plugins is, for example, for example, this is what the, wow, why did you snap? That's weird. Like this is the 
BBC, the BBC Symphony Orchestra thing really quick. This is like the violins and stuff like that. You might notice, wow, the, the attack is really bad. The attack is horrible. What do I do about that? The cool thing you can do about attack, you just add another instrument. So what I did is I just added, I just went to the BBC uh, Symphony Orchestra again. And under the violins, I actually just added the oboe sound. Not even kidding. I just added the oboe sound and I turned it down a little bit. Uh, I just turned it down slightly and that's what I used. And that gave me a decent attack. So that's, that's another thing you can do, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, going back to the chat. Uh, I'm worried about recording audio and video separately. Um, it can be difficult if you have a lot of embellishments. If you have a lot of embellishments and stuff like that, I normally try to do a one take. But if you're just recording a video straight on and you're using you're using a click track, you're using the backing track, and you're just syncing the video to it, it's it's not that hard. You just have to play along with your playing, which is probably the hardest part. Uh, let's see. When you're mixing, do you pan every every accompanied instrument? Good question. Um, so what I normally do is it really depends on the arrangement. Normally, there's at least some sort of panning. Uh, like for the strings, for example, I have a lot of things panning left and right. Uh, I don't know why that's like that right now. That's weird. I, maybe I tried to turn down the volume or something. Uh, so the cool thing about this piano virtual instrument is that it actually plays left and right by itself. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear, but like depending on where the note is. Oh, wait, add that, that as well. What did I do? Oh, I see what I did. I'm sorry. I have to go back to direct sound so you guys can hear it. There we go. I'm not sure if you can hear over Zoom, but for me, some of the notes are a tiny bit left and right. And that's the cool thing about this plugin. It automatically does that. But if I'm going to just do piano and ocarina, for example, maybe I'll put the piano like, you know, like 30% left and ocarina right. If I'm doing piano strings and ocarina, I'll normally have the ocarinas in forefront. If I have two ocarinas, I'll do it one slightly left, one slightly right. The strings, I'll do it just like in orchestra. So like I'll have like the basses and cellos on the right side. I'll have the violins like on the left side. I'll have the viola somewhat near the middle. And also, this is all just personal interpretation as well. It really depends on the person. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm going. There's a lot of questions. So I'm just going through all of them. Um, one problem I have is when I root. So that's that's one of the big issues um, about removing root noise is that it also removes some of the sound. Uh, especially because, you know, some instruments have more overtones than others, like violins and stuff. The best solution I have is trying to, like, use, like, a reverb that works with your room sound uh, or, like, room noise. If not, you kind of you kind of just have to experiment um, with um, kind of cutting out some of the sound. For example, like, I will use uh, this, and I normally try to remove some of the noise wherever it is. If you just click, it adds another dot and you can kind of do stuff like this. And you, you can try to remove the room noise that way, whether it's super high or super low, but it's, it's really difficult if to do that. It's, it's kind of difficult. Yeah, I, I had to do that for a while and I just used a reverb. You do something to the master track at the end. So normally uh, what I, I label this as master because I was doing mastering when I was, um, kind of doing a when I was gonna like upload this to Spotify and stuff like that. So for this, I kind of like did like, you know, my multiband compression, I did this thing called cream Two, which is a software I got from the focus, right? Sweet stuff. And that one's kind of just does all this stuff. It's this one's really confusing. I'm not really gonna talk about it all that much. This is just I just it's just labeled as mastered because I was doing mastering for uploading it to Spotify and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Which video editors show waveforms? Uh, yeah, DaVinci Resolve and most paid uh, video editors use, um, um, they, you can see the waveforms under the files. 
Let's see. Yeah, any other questions, anyone? There's plenty of things to talk about. Hey, Steven. Hey. Um, I just wanted to take a minute um, to talk about a few things. Is that okay? Can I borrow just a minute of your time? Um, sure, yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, hi, I'm Nicholas. I'm gonna turn on my camera for a minute. <laughs> Oh, here, let me uh, let me uh, stop screen sharing and uh, spotlight you. Thanks. Appreciate you. Hey, everybody. Um, I just wanted to take the time to really thank Stephen for this workshop um, because he um, took a lot of time to prepare this presentation and also because he um, is just an awesome human being in general. Really, really appreciate him. So if you could in the chat just show a thank you or just type thank you. I'm sure he'd really, really appreciate that. Um, he's giving you all this content for free. And honestly, I enjoyed learning this so, so much. Um, so if you all are from GOC or Global Ocarina Network, um, I will be posting a version of uh, this recorded session so you can reference back every single um, uh, part of it um, as you need it. Like if you I have everything recorded, so. Perfect. Yeah, I saw the recording thing. Um, so send me the recording later and I'll post it. Um, so I'll be posting that. I'll also be posting it on the Global Ocarina's YouTube, uh, Global Ocarina Communities YouTube channel. So you can access it anytime, say in a year, you forget it, but you also want to come back to hear that specific thing, then um, go check it out. It will be on YouTube and it'll be really easy to find. Whereas in the Facebook group, it might get lost. You can always find it on our YouTube. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube, it is Global Ocarina Community, exactly as the Facebook group is spelled. Um, look it up on YouTube and subscribe. Um, and also, um, just wanted to add a very quick plug as well. Um, if you enjoy what Steven does or also are interested in doing Ocarina lessons, uh, please uh, be sure to message him about that. I know that he also enjoys teaching. Um, I'll be doing more um, um, exposure of other teachers um, in different sessions in the future. Um, but I know he's um, been kind of talking to y'all about the mixing and all of that, but he hasn't had an opportunity to um, discuss that with y'all. So at any point, um, just feel free to message him about that. Um, I just wanted to very quickly say that. Um, I think that's everything I have. Um, was there anything else, Steven? I'm sorry, we can't hear you for a second. I muted my microphone. It probably would help if I unmuted. I am sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna be still in the room for about 10 more minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, for people who have any more questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, if there's no one currently talking, you can also unmute your mic to ask a question, but if not, just put it in the chat and I'll get to it. Um, cause right now I've pretty much told you all the basics. I've pretty much talked about all the basics. Now it's just trial and error experimentation, finding free open source software. Cause there's tons of free software available, which is really, really good. You definitely couldn't do this 10 years ago too. Yeah. Pro recording tip. Do not mute the mic. <laughs> That's the best tip I could give you. Don't mute your microphone. Oh man. <laughs> Or uh, don't be like me and uh, when you're trying to do a live video, uh, you should start the video button. You should press the video button and actually do it. Oh, wow, my phone was unmuted. Good thing that didn't interrupt me. Let me unmute that. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's, there's, this funny there's this funny story. When I didn't press the record button on my video and I was playing a 15 minute long unaccompanied clarinet piece that I was trying to do one take of. It was a really great take and I didn't press. And then I spent the next three hours trying to get another take. Always mute the phone when recording. That's another great. Yes, another great question. Yes. So uh, when, you're, when you're recording, I mentioned not going above like negative six decibels. Uh, test your highest notes of your ocarina before playing. Like, seriously, because if it peaks in the middle and it's a perfect take, you have to re-record it. Because when it peaks, it's just going to be like, like you're, it's, it's just going to sound bad. So yeah, I always test my the higher notes. I try not to go above negative six and negative eight decibels. Because when you go above that, then it's just, you're kind of lost. You're just lost for hope if uh, you play high note and it just doesn't go.
Yes. And if you have any questions about Resolve, uh, DaVinci Resolve, um, Felix does a lot of his stuff in Resolve. Personally, I do my video editing and Resolve and my mixing in Reaper. Um, but yeah, Felix is another good source for that. Do you reply, prefer replying in text directly or sending? Uh, personally, um, do you prefer playing effects directly on tracks or sending signal to snare line the effects track? Um, can you elaborate what exactly you mean by that? Are you meaning um, like the tracks I have, the tracks I had where it's like um, no, no recordings, but it's just um, the effects or? Um, all right, can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. So I was like, um, cause I've seen like some people do like a, they make a separate empty track and then they lay the effects on there and then like they would just drag the signal of the like the ocarina track okay like, mm -hmm. and then they would drag it over to the reverb track and adjust the uh adjust the uh, the percentage of, of the signal and then that'll just uh like like that i don't know if you do you like i do just... that i do that sometimes if i'm having a really hard time mixing uh, with the way I was doing, I'll, I'll do something, I'll do something of the sort. Um, I didn't talk about it in this because it's really complicated. For, uh, it gets really complicated and really specific, especially for people who are starting out, uh, because you can just adjust the volumes like those volume laws and stuff. Like I said, that's just the basic way to doing it. But if you're wanting to get really into mixing and doing that stuff, yeah, you definitely can do that. And I do that sometimes. It's just for this. I didn't want to talk about that because that gets a little bit on the complex side. And I was already presenting so much information. <laughs> um, but personally, the easiest way to like do this mixing is like kind of the way I was showing you where I, um, oh, let me just show the screen again, Boop. where like I will have like something like this. And I kind of just do all that stuff. I do all the reverb and all that. Yeah. Yeah, and the cool thing is you can just stack tracks into different things and all that, yeah. If you don't, if you didn't understand like uh, what we're talking about right there, where we and Mark were talking about, it it's really complex. Mixing is really hard. <laughs> mixing is very, very, very difficult when you get to that level. Like I've only been doing this for about a year, year and a half, and there's still so much I don't know. I'm constantly ask, bugging my mixing friends who do this for like a living about how to do stuff because it's. It's hard. So don't feel bad if you're just struggling because I'm I'm struggling all the time with this. I'm always just ripping my hair out. I think someone tried to talk and I over talked them or All right. All right. Uh, all right, I'll see you later. I made a post um, linking everybody to the YouTube channel where this video will be found very easily. Um, so here's the link again in case you missed it. That's our YouTube channel for Global Ocarina Network. And once again, I just want to thank Steven. Huge thank you. Really appreciate you for coming by and doing our topic of the month for June. Um, also, I really learned a lot. There's so much that I don't know that I don't know. <laughs> so just like you said, it's, it's, it's a craft that um, takes a lot of work to perfect. Oil. There's a lot of stuff I don't know. <laughs> There's so much. I don't know that I don't know this stuff. How could I ever know that I know this stuff? I don't know it. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I used all free so that's all free software that I was using too. That's the cool thing, especially in this day and age, there's so much free open source software that you can use. And so like anyone can, you know, start mixing. Anyone can create their own arrangements on MuseScore. MuseScore is really good for it being free software, especially MuseScore 3. It's it's fantastic. It's what I primarily use. It's what we primarily use for creating lead sheets, uh, VG lead sheets. Um, there's so, pretty much everything I need to do on it. I can do it. And the cool thing about MuseWare, if, if you want to get really complex in that stuff, you can kind of create your own shortcuts and stuff to make your workflow faster. So for example, I'm not using my mouse to type notes. I'm actually using my keyboard for everything. So like on my right hand, I'll have note values. On my left hand, I'm typing the notes and stuff like that. It's yeah, your workflow can get really quick if you like learn how to do it properly. That is absolutely awesome. Maybe a topic for another day also too. <sighs> yes, that's a whole nother can of worms there. <laughs>
definitely. Oh yeah, there was one there was one question that someone asked earlier that I did not get to. I kind of want I just want to mention that last thing unless anyone else has any questions. All right. So here uh, someone asked why am I doing my <laughs> why am I doing my slowdowns and speedups like this? Um it's super the thing with VScore, if you just type uh, like retard on there or something like that, it's not going to slow down. You kind of have to do your slowdowns and speedups manually. So what I do is I'll kind of like do some set intervals or something like I'll do like one, two, three, four, five for like the slowdown. I'll do like minus one, minus two, minus three or whatever I'm feeling for it. And that's how I create my slowing down and speeding up things. So for example, right here, uh, let me, oh wait, I need to move this. That's out, that's out, that's in the way. There we go. And that's how I do all my slowing down and speeding up things. It's, it looks really complicated. It can be once you like don't know how to get used to it, but it's a way for me to be able to do these in view score. So I can just import the MIDI data into Reaper and I can just start working on my mixing. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. Um, the thing with shock mounts, uh, that's a good question. The thing with shock mounts, it, it mainly is to make it so like, you don't hear a bunch of like rattling. Cause if I don't have a shock mount and I'm doing this, or if I'm doing this, you'll hear, you'll, you'll hear the shaking in the microphone as well. Cause it'd be like strictly like connected to it. What the shock mount does is it's make it. So if you accidentally bump the stand or like you're shaking the floor that it, you don't hear it on the microphone. So like it makes it a lot easier. So that's, you don't need a shock mount. Shock mounts only for like, if you're like me who moves a lot, you don't want to risk like ruining a recording. So yeah, that's a good question though. Yeah, it's a more direct rubato pretty much. And you can adjust the rubato as much as you want. And what I normally do is I normally will do that in the click track. I'll like set it as like eighth notes in the click track and I'll just do that completely separate. All right. Any more questions? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller, come on. <laughs> any questions? I'm here to answer any that I can. And if I don't know anything, I can always ask my mixing friends and I can bug them for like an hour or so. <laughs> And in that link for the YouTube video that will be posted on the GOC stuff, I'll have the links to all the stuff. Uh, mentioned that Reaper stays free forever. Okay, so the so the thing about Reaper is it's technically a thirty day free trial, but then after that, it's it's still free. You just it just says that your trial is like ended or whatever or whatever, and then you just exit out of it. It's still it's still free. So. You'll have a notification that pops up every time you open up Reaper, but even though it does that, it's still free. It's, that's just how it is. It'll just be like, you, you've been using this software for so many days. Uh, and then they'll like, you have a link for you to buy Reaper, but you can just proceed, proceed on regularly. So yeah. I ended up buying Reaper after like not after using it for a couple of years, just because it's um I've since I've used it so much, I just bought it just to you know be like, okay, yeah, I use this all the time. I might as well buy it. But yeah. For beginners who are just trying to do that up, yeah, I, I was wanted to I wanted to support it. So yeah, for beginners, you can just download it for free. Just use it as free software to try out. And yeah. It's all mixing is all trial and error. It's there isn't one right answer. Everyone has different things. Yeah, the price is really good. Isn't it only like, it was only like 60 bucks, I'm pretty sure. It was really cheap. And for me, I like the workflow. I like the workflow personally for it better than um, if I'm using like Logic or any of that stuff. For me, this is what works best for me. Maybe just cause I'm used to it, but I've tried using others and I just like this better. Wow, I talked about a lot of information in an hour long time. I am pretty sure a lot of people are lost. I apologize. <laughs> Trying to get through so much information in so little time, and I was stuttering all over the place.
I literally have a bucket of ocarinas, like, right there. I have, I have some ocarinas in that bag as well, but this is like my bucket of ocarinas. <laughs> no, Mark. He would not, he does not like reader. <laughs> yeah, it's... Listen, Mark, Mark, don't you keep your ocarinas in a, in a giant bin? Pretty sure you do too. I remember when Mark showed me a picture of his bin of ocarinas. That was terrifying. Don't ever do that again. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure you showed me and I was like, oh God, that's terrifying. All right. Um, yeah, I'll leave. I'll leave the room open for just a couple more minutes, like three more minutes. Any last second questions? Anything regarding whether it's the Muse score stuff or Reaper or even if it's about like video stuff, just let me know. All right. See you later, Nicholas. Yeah. Any last second questions? You have three minutes. I need to get stuff ready for going to volleyball. Okay. Fine. How hard do you sell it when you're doing the video take? By sell it, what do you mean by sell it exactly? Yeah, of course. I'll answer the question in a second. Oh, dude, if I if I make a mistake, I just if it's if it's such a minor mistake, I don't make a poker face at all. It's um. It's something that I've kind of acquired just from all the performances I've done. I used to make a face every time I make a mistake, but especially with videos, like it's just a video. If you make a tiny mistake, who cares? No one's going to notice. So I don't, I don't try to make a face at all because I feel really bad. I'd be like, oh, time to record again, but I don't have time for that. So ah, where is my back? There we go. Oh, re wait. Uh, Charles, what do you mean by remove parts of an audio file with Reverb? Oh, wait, oh, with Reaper? Uh, yes. So here, let me open up Reaper one more time really quick. Uh, share screen. Boop, 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 boop. So to remove parts of an audio file, uh, let me just go to the Ocarina's really quick. The cool thing, oh, wait, let me remove those. The cool thing with Reaper is all you have to do to remove parts of the audio file, you just drag the end and you can just cut it out like that. Super easy. Or if you want to remove something in the middle, press S or um, you, do, you do right uh, right click and then um, cut items or whatever, or not cut items, but split it. Then you can kind of do that. So it's super easy. You just drag and stuff and everything's super quick and easy with that. All right. Um, Let's see, where is the chat? Where is the chat? I need the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Improvised orientation. All right. I'll leave the room open for a couple more minutes. Um, I'm definitely like done, but if you have any questions, let me know in the chat. And as I'm packing up to go, uh, just let me know. Right now I'm just packing up because I gotta go play volleyball. Oh, I need my, my shoes. Oops. Any more questions in the chat? All right, no problem. Uh, I'm gonna stop screen sharing, boop. And I'm gonna turn off video. I'll still be here to answer questions. If anyone has questions, I'm just turning off my video because I'm getting ready for volleyball. Yeah, any last second questions? Uh, you have five minutes until I leave. So I'll get to any question I can. And yeah, I hope you all have a great day. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, sorry for me stuttering all over the place because uh, I wasn't knowing what I was doing half the time and I was just really nervous about trying to present a half decent uh, presentation and information session.
yeah if you have any other questions uh feel free to comment in like the the facebook thing or you can just private message me um yeah i can answer quick questions in messenger if you want to take lessons let me know i do lessons for you know re re ocarina clarinet a bunch of instruments and stuff like that so yeah Yeah, if you have any quick questions, though, just seriously, let me know. I'm open to always talking about Ocarina and mixing stuff. All right, see you, everyone. I'll still be here if you have any quick questions or if you want to talk about something. Uh, ah, there we go. Wow, great job, Steve Reno. Congratulations. Love the panel, man. See you, everyone. It's been a while since I played that. <laughs> Okay, I'll go to volleyball. Okay. All right. Hey, have fun. Okay, bud. Good session. Thank you for everyone uh, who's still here. <laughs>